I'm L.A. Little and this is your daily T.A. wrap. Well, we take a look at these markets and we do it from a neoclassical perspective, asking ourselves each time what happened today and what does it tell us about tomorrow. You know, I do the show four times a week. I do it Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time here from the base of the Rocky Mountains. Folks, I'm glad you could join me. I, um... I will not be doing a show tomorrow or Wednesday uh, in lieu of the holidays. Uh, we'll be back Thursday for an abbreviated, uh, um, not, not an abbreviated session. The abbreviated session actually is tomorrow. Uh, so it'll be a full session Thursday and we'll do a show that night. I don't think all that much is going to happen tomorrow, although we'll review that here tonight as well. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, quite a bit to talk about. <clears throat> or actually, I don't know if there's quite a bit to talk about. But there are some things to cover here, so let's uh, take a look at it. So today was another day of up. Uh, we had a nice big spike up again. Uh, and primarily uh, it was based off the Apple news. Apple came out, as uh, X uh, pointed out last night during the weekly broadcast, that uh, China Mobile had came out and said that the deal was done, that Apple was going to sell through them in China, which opens up a fairly large market to them that had been closed all this time. How much that adds to the bottom line, I can't really say, but uh, clearly the market uh, was happy to see that happen. The Dow Jones up 73, 16,294 and a half. The S&P's tacked on almost uh, nine and a half, a little over. 1827, 1828 was the close. Uh, got as high as 2975. Uh, we'll look at that in uh, detail here in a second. Composite. Tax on 44, that was the big gainer, up a percent, 414.890, so almost 41.49 uh, 41 is a close. The NDX uh, percentage-wise about the same, 35.89 and a third, up 38. And the Russell was up about a percent, 10.75, 11,057 and a quarter. Uh, we had gold down today. Um, looks like my bonds are off the board. The bonds were down today almost a full point. Let's get rid of that one because I got the new one up. So they were down almost a full point. They're up after hours it looks like. The uh, dollar was actually flat today. Uh, it was down and came back. Uh, all gold, all of those uh, pretty much flat. Gold and silver down a bit. So nothing spectacular there but um, it was a trade to the upside today. If we look at the markets, let's pop over here, take a look at what we got. So one of the things we talked about was, you know, this was the Fed day, right? And we had the big reversal, bonds held. Uh, you know, you got, the, you got the spike down on Fed day that reversed, and then it just climbed the rest of the day, right? Then you got a little hesitation on Thursday. Extenuation. Right, extend, extended on Friday and extended again today. So you're pushing up. Friday had the big volume on options expiration. Today you can see the volume starting to tail off down here. But it's doing exactly what you would want uh, to give you a sense that this thing wants to go higher. And higher is what the story is. Now, we had some projections around 1859, I think the number was, sometime back. Those numbers have changed a lot because of all the sideways action. So really the, the trade that's in play right now is the sideways breakout. 
And if you take and double that thing up, you know, the projection there takes you up to somewhere around uh, 1850 now. So 18 and a half is the number. That's where this thing's trying to get. Uh, that's another, you know, 20 points up here if it can get there. So we got the 1830. The thing that we're going to see here in a minute, though, is that this looks like it's going to, it's not going to happen this year, most likely. Uh, probably into January sometime is the way that thing probably is going to shape up. On the weekly, um, the projection is even higher, though. Let me grab that number for you. It's about 1882 on the weekly. So that's about from today's, what was today's close? 18... 27 1828 basically so from today's close the weekly would project about another three percent and uh, another one and a half percent or so on the daily so still can push higher uh, what we're going to see here in a second though is I think it's going to tail off tomorrow and get some sort of a pullback either tomorrow or uh, potentially on Thursday it looks like to me and I'll show you why I think that. Let's go to the other numbers first, though. Uh, we had a strange day in the Russell. It opened up 5% higher or something. Uh, that's not a true bar. I'm sure they'll clean that up. But it did close uh, 11.57, right? That high, prior high, was 11.47. So you're 10 points over it. Again, extension. You're over the range. Uh, a, B, C, D structures, there's really none in place here right now. You're not going to get those until you get a pullback. And if we go back to the S&P, you can see how that might shape up. Um, and, and, and actually, you do want to pull back even if you're bullish. And what you would like to see is you'd like to see this thing come back in to the swing point highs, do a retest regen. Given that it was a confirmed breakout, it's probably going to hold. That gives you the ABCD structure, which does what? Takes you up to the target. So that's the sort of scenario you'd like to see play out. And what you have to do is watch it and manage it and see if it, in fact, can do that. If we go over to the NDX, uh, matter of fact, let's, uh, well, we can see the NDX right quick. Big pop up today, Apple uh, driving that thing. Uh, let me tackle the Dow real quick first, and then we'll take the IXIC instead. So the Dow pushing higher, volume tailing off, doing the same sort of thing that we've got happening on the S&P 500. The one I wanted to concentrate on, though, for technology uh, was the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, big spike up here, nice big spike up, you know, gap up. Everything is perfect with respect to the way it's doing that. If you look at this guy, this guy actually has an ABCD target uh, that, given this big move today, is getting pretty close. And that, that target here was uh, 4169, uh, which is just about up here. Uh, that kind of a push looks like it's going to try to go right to it and then get its pullback the way it's acting. So we'll see if it gets up there, or do we get the push back from here that sets up the ABC structure and actually takes you over it. We'll see which one of those happens, but right now uh, the NASDAQ uh, is is quite strong comparatively. 41.48.90, the ABCD measures to 41.69. And I was going to see if we could see that range would be Let's take the lower top end of this. So 39.92 to 40.81. 39.92. So it's about 90, 90 points almost, right? So 90 points onto that would get you up to uh, 41.71. Take off the extra, about 41.70. And we're sitting at 41.49. And, oh, that's interesting. So the ABCD target that was out there still measures to 41.69. And, whoops, not the, not the instrument I wanted. Let me grab the right one. And this little range trade takes you almost to the same price. Right there, 41.69. Uh, so that, that actually, you know, when I see things like that, or I see two projections both line up to the same spot, it tells me it's probably going to get to that spot. And that's, that's always the sort of thing that you're looking for. 
Okay, let's go to where I think the issues are, though, and that's over on the sectors. Um, and it, it's not as if these are major issues. They're just they're just enough fodder to tell you that uh, it's not going to be just straight up, probably. So here's the IYT, right? The, the uh, transports. Transports get over prior high, right? Over the swing point high already. It's trying to get over this one. That top. 130.78 and you know we were up pretty strong today up a half a percent on the S&P up a full percent on the NDX this only gets up to 130.84 and so it goes over it back under it less volume right it's a failure it's a failure at the highs okay so so fell that resistance if we look at the semiconductors the semis remember have been the ones that were struggling. They got a big poop boost off the Fed. Well, they, they didn't do anything today. They actually finished lower. If we go look at the XLB, the XLB is struggling up here at the highs, right? You got a swing point high. It did get over today. 4470 was that prior high. Uh, it gets over, it stays over it. Volume a little bit heavier, so yeah, it's it's gotten over it. That's a good thing, right? The bad thing is it's really struggling. You can you can see it. There's three dojis in a row. Matter of fact, uh, if they were inverse, it'd be a tri-star doji, but it's not. So three dojis in a row at new high. Not exactly where I'd want to buy something. XLE. XLE fails at the swing point high. Right, we got this swing point high 8704. We go over it, back under it, less volume. It's not an extended move, so I wouldn't call it two bar reversals, you know. But it's a failure, it's a failure at a swing point high. Now, there are some that are still strong, for example, the XLF. The XLF gets over the highs and holds it, right? XLI just extending this, this thing is the strongest one right now. So, the XLI gets over the highs, still extending. Now they are doing a little dojis up there, but you got no volume, so you know I don't know if it means all that much. The XLK extremely strong, big gap up, holds the highs, breaks the highs. So you got three strong ones: XLF, XLI, XLK. Then you've got the the, the safety guys, the XLP, can't go anywhere, right? The XLU, same sort of story, can't go anywhere. The one that I thought was going to get a decent pop today was the XLV. But the XLV couldn't get anything going. A little doji and just barely got higher. You know, just it's just struggling as they're coming up towards the highs. Uh, it did get over, I think, and stayed over. Let's see on the December 11th bar, 55.12. It closed right at it. That's about as close as you can cut it. That also kind of begs for a failure tomorrow because it didn't get over it. So, so that's so you got four failing, three of them strong. And the XLY is actually the fourth. So you got about half wanting to pull back, half of them that can extend a little bit farther. And that's where the, the sector's set up. And you can see this picture looks a lot different. And I don't mean this particular uh, sector, but all the sectors look uh, particularly different than what you see on the indexes. You actually see some weakness here, whereas there you didn't. One thing I've, I've noted before, and that if we do start seeing sell-offs whenever it comes, some of these are set up dangerously. Like this is probably going to set up as a swing point low as well. So you're probably going to have three swing point lows all in the same area. That's never a good thing when you come back to that area if in fact you do. Now if you don't get back there it doesn't matter. If you don't break it of course it doesn't matter. But the fact that it's there is something you have to raise your eyebrows and take a look at. Uh, the ox markets. Uh, the two big things there are the dollar and the bonds. We'll start with the dollar because it's uh, a little less to talk about. So the dollar today comes down, uh, trades down, and then does a doji. And actually, it was down. I, I was wondering why. I thought it was down today. It was down. I'm not sure why it showed as even over or almost even on my. Uh, uh, on the oh uh, uh, the quotes that we had to start the day so dollar let me look at the the x uh, the FXE the euro 
the euro was trying to push higher and it failed so this is setting up <laughs> these 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 markets are interesting because you know we we talked about this once before this thing set up uh, let me get the right tool here um it set up abc structures all the way up right one after another all the way up right and now it's doing the opposite and actually this one went higher so it, it had we not had that spike on fed day we would have had one but that really didn't happen but what you do have now is from here down right potentially ABCD structure come back the other way and so it's it's kind of a you know the these things are trend trend machines right they just keep trending once they get going it takes them a long time to stop uh, I guess that's why a lot of people like playing the Forex so anyway ABCD structure potential on the way down a bearish one uh, dollar getting stronger should hurt gold gold couldn't go anywhere today if you look at it, it was just a doji sitting there. Uh, SLV looks the same, really can't go anywhere. These guys are all hanging at the lows, which is not a good thing if you're a gold bug. Uh, if we go over, the one thing I saw today that, that made me look a little bit longer than usual was the municipal starting to break down. So volume comes out of them today. They're trying to break the swing point low. Uh, that low is 103.88. You close at 103.92, so you hold it, but you hit it with volume. Uh, it looks to me like they're going to try to take this out. And here, you do have these ABCD structures playing out one after another on the way down. So, you know, going back in time here, you had one here that played out. That one actually um, rose quite a bit, eventually played out. Uh, you actually had two on the way down. You had nested ones. You had another one here. And now you're getting another bounce up and the attempt to trade down again. It looks to me like this thing's going to work its way back down towards these lows. Okay. Oh, and bonds. There it is. I was trying to figure out what else I wanted to say on this page, the bonds themselves. So I started tracking uh, the 10-year and the 20 year this is the 20 year this is the one we've been tracking this one today went over the high into resistance failed came back down right so you got a trend change to sideways which is quote unquote good right but you're still down here hanging out at these lows which is bad right now if if it can't get out of here it's going to be an issue and right now I see no reason to believe it will get out of here I don't see any evidence, any strong evidence, that it's going to get out of here. And so if this drifts back to the bottom end of the range, you know, then that's uh, definitely something that's going to become a problem. If I go look at the tenure, and this is, you know, if you, th if, you th if you believe the Fed is on a tapering curve and they're going to continue to take money out of the system, then you would expect the rates to try to rise, and even though the Fed says they're going to try to keep them down. Here's the 10 year. So if you think about the rate curve, you know, the way the way that curve typically looks, and I'll just freehand a draw here, is is you'll have um, the yields, you know, on the long end of the curve, you know, whichever direction they're trending right now. Uh, actually, I'm doing the opposite. So let me let me flip that around. So the rates are trying to go up, right? So I'm doing interest rates. So typically, you know, your long end of the curve is like that. Your short, your shorter end of the curve is at a lower level, right? And you don't want to see this one push up too fast, too far, right? Because then you get inverted yield curves. And then, of course, you've got your, your you know, T-bills down here at the bottom. So this is like, you know, 30-day type stuff. This is your 10-year, and this is your 20-year. Well, what you're seeing is this 10-year is really getting pressure. It got pressure last week on the Fed news. That was the Fed bar, this bar here. So that Fed bar spikes down. It does a doji, though. It gets a little bounce. But then today, volume really starts to come out of it, and it comes down again. If this thing continues to move down, 
you know, that means this side of the curve is moving up. And what you don't want to see is, is this thing really start to spike. And, and the reason you don't want to see it spiking is because if they do start to spike, you know, it is going to put pressure on equities. It, it has no choice but to put pressure on equities. And so the 10-year, the 20-year the bonds, uh, something to certainly keep our eye on as the new year gets underway. What you want to see is you want to see them hold and not start spiking. Because if the yields start spiking, you know, somewhere around, I think 3% is probably going to be the magic number, somewhere over that. Um, then you'll see the bonds really sell off. Right, because that will set up a, a, a break of multiple swing points on multiple time frames. The momentum will kick in and the market will get a spike down as a result of it probably. The the equity markets. All right, let's see uh, let's see if we get any questions. Okay, nothing on the boards. Let me check. You know, it's kind of thin out there. I realize that most people are taking time off and probably will just uh, catch this when they have some time or not catch it at all depending what their uh, schedules look like um, oh, I got one email let's see what this one is LA what do you think about GM I'm not sure GM actually was probably one of the better um, here I'll just type it in was one of the better setups in the auto and still is. So if I pull this over, let me get this over to so we have the weekly too. Um, still setting highs. So it came back. Did a, here was the the breakout over that swing point high. You never got the retest regen. You've had some pretty big spikes and bars. One was Fed Day, one was Friday. So and we had big volume everywhere those days. So I don't know if I put too much emphasis, but it was too, it was positive, right? This just looks to me like you know it's going to try to go higher. Uh, I, you just have to on these kinds of stocks, you got to find a place to get in. When it's range trading like this, you want to try to get in the lower end of the range. In this particular case, you have a swing point high here that gives you a retest regenerate zone. So you would actually like to see it come back right into here. Uh, but the market doesn't always give you ideal entries. That would be the ideal entry. So, you know, you just have to take whatever it gives you. If it breaks out again, it's really not, it's not something you can buy because, you know, you just have continuation here. You don't have anything to really set the momentum in place. And so, you know, if it, it, if it just takes off up here and grinds higher there's not a lot you can do about it um, you gotta wait you know there's two types of trades everybody there's there's retraces and there's breakouts and the market alternates those two trades over and over and over and last week you know there was a lot of stocks that gave you or gave us retrace trades back on you know Monday Tuesday Wednesday before the Fed thing uh, but now it's the opposite most of them are being breakout trades. Now, breakout trades, in a number of cases, you know, depending on the setup, have a lower probability of success. Something like 80% of them come back within six bars. So you have to be very selective of what you buy on breakouts, and this wouldn't be one. So that would that would be, you know, you just got to wait on a retrace. Uh, there are some breakouts you can buy. Um, you know, for, for example, I mean, I can go back to one. Apple, when it broke out here off this range tree, was a was a good setup, right? This one was a good setup because when you have a big wide price spread bar like that, once you get the breakout over it, because it will control prices for six to seven uh, weeks, and in this case, usually it's about six to seven, and what was this? About about six, and you got a breakout about five five actually. So anywhere from five to six, but once you get that breakout, you can expect an extension. That's what happened, and then there was the retrace on this one, and now it's going back up to try to do the breakout. Problem is, is that on Apple, that's a long way, very fast move up, right? Volume is expanding, so you know if it breaks out of that high, I don't know how far it can carry, right? If you look, uh, 
on Apple if I pull over here and get the weekly I don't think you're gonna see anything on the left side hardly so Apple could carry what five and five of uh, five ninety four and a half is that high so it could carry up to there potentially but we'll see what it does when it gets up here it's coming into it with decent volume today though but yeah I mean you got you got to be careful about what you buy on breakouts you got to get the right setups okay um, you know it looks to me like you know I mean certainly the grinds in effect the grind into the end of the year you know first of the year that Santa Claus rally people like to call it where volume just tapers off and you just kind of move in the direction of whatever the trend is and typically this time of year the trend is up so they you know they tag it with the name Santa Claus rally and that's what everybody knows it by but essentially it's a low volume grind at the end of the year and that's what we're doing uh, can we get a little setback yeah what does it do it probably just sets up an ABC structure on the way up so you should probably hope for one uh, the fact that multiple sectors are, are diverging a little bit uh, uh, diverging in the sense that they're uh, struggling, you know, half of them uh, says that it could come at any point now. If I look overseas, I think overseas is, is suggesting that it will come. And, and I'll quickly, I got a couple minutes here. Uh, if we look at the CACs, you know, CACs is pushing up into resistance. It's coming up into that retest regenerate zone that we talked about. So that zone is off these swing point lows. You have one here, it pushed into it today. Right, it's right on the resistance zone. All these swing point lows are going to be resistance. Why is that? Because everybody up here is in a losing trade. Right, they're going to want to sell as this comes back in. Right, and hopefully they can quote quote unquote get out for even or a small loss. That's what everybody always wants to do. This can make it back up to here, you know. But it looks to me like this was a big fast move off the bottom. That's a big move there, right? After a serious breakdown, that that's begging for an ABCD structure back the other way. We'll see if it sets up that way. But uh, right now, it certainly looks like it's going to hit some resistance and try to come back in tonight, probably. Uh, FTSE looks looks a little bit better. Uh, FTSE didn't have nearly the breakdown. The FTSE's in there doing the retest regen off this bar, so that one's doing. That retest, we'll have to wait and see how it trades out of that. It's coming into it with less volume. If the CAC starts to turn, I expect the FTSE will do the same. The one that's that's pulling all these guys, of course, is the DAX. The DAX had a big move up, got over the swing point high today. That one potentially can extend a little bit, but again, when we talk about, you know, like I was just talking about knowing which breakouts to buy, this already had a big move. And you don't have the momentum trade on the way up now in the sense that you don't have a scenario where there's a lot of stops up here right you just went up there peaked right you peaked at this area came straight down to an ABCD down or tried to now you reverse and go straight up well that's that's kinda hard to find any stops up there they're just they've already probably triggered here off this swing point high that's where they triggered so if I, if I were shorting it here Believe me, I would have had my stops over this high, and that's what anybody that's trading is going to do. And that's why this gap up got so much momentum the next two or three bars. That was where all the stops were sitting. They had to come out. But now we're on the other end, right? We probably should get some sort of retrace. So overseas, probably going to try to retrace a little bit. If I look over in Asia, um, you know, they can bounce a little bit more, but they're struggling. Uh, the, Hong, the Hong Kong market. Uh, Australia had a huge bounce. Australia actually is a positive now. I was looking at it right before I came on. Um, if I look at it here on the weekly, this guy's coming back into the swing point low. That's a retest regen here, and it's actually over it. So when you see a retest regen quote unquote fail, right? It didn't succeed. In other words, it did not succeed when price came up to put price to push price back in the direction of the break. That that didn't happen. It failed. It went over. Sometimes that failure can be false, right? So you want to see it come back within a bar, which would be this week. But if it's not, what does that do? Well, that just simply says you're in some sort of a larger range trade, right? At worst. 
All right, I'm running out of time here. I've talked enough. I'm going to leave it at that. Folks, I wish you the merriest Christmas. You know, happy holidays to you and yours. And, um, you know, be safe. Make a little bit more money potentially tomorrow. Uh, enjoy the family and friends. It's that time of the year. Time to reflect a little bit uh, and to be thankful for what you have. So I thank you all, and I appreciate you being there. Tell a friend, tell two. As always, I'm L.A. Little, and this is and was your daily T.A. Wrap. Have yourself a great night, and I'll see you Thursday. Unless you're a subscriber, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, folks.